Hello, I'm Stuart Craner. Welcome to this series of webinars brought to you by the Business Ecosystem Alliance. Our aim with the Alliance is to further knowledge of the ideas behind and best practice in the field of business ecosystems. In this session, we bring together two leading researchers and thinkers on ecosystems with global best practice. Simone Cicero and Emanuele Quintarelli from Boundaryless are joined by Pradeep Ramachandra, who is Chief Product Officer for Digital Mobility Platforms at the Bosch Group in India. We're going to talk about the challenges of designing a complex ecosystemic strategy involving large teams and several inter interoperating products. So welcome Simone, Emanuele and Pradeep. Over, over to you in the first instance to Simone. Thank you so much, Stuart, and um, thank you for uh, for having us. I think uh, this uh, is a relevant experience that really deserves to be shared uh, more widely. So, um, very quickly, uh, what are we going to, uh, you know, let me just introduce quickly Boundless, what we do, we enable, as a mission, we enable everyone to participate in the future of organizing, so essentially we do it uh, uh, you know, through our frameworks. I'm going to speak a, a little bit about those in a minute, but uh, let me just double click quickly into uh, why, um, you know, we believe that the work we are doing with Bosch and with other partners is significant. We are essentially taking over this idea of uh, connecting how we organize internally and externally in general, across organizations and inside organizations, uh, with uh, the products we build, the, the, the we build the portfolios we build, and so on. So it's about really a, a theory and a practice that unifies uh, how we design our firms and how we design our products. I think uh, this is the uh, space that we are exploring uh, in, in, in the you know fully with, with our partners and with our adopters. And we do it, uh, as I said, uh, with uh, uh, open frameworks that are released in Creative Commons. So important thing is uh, if you want to play with those things, you can just head uh, uh, towards boundaries.io. You will find all the toolkits. And most specifically, we use a business model innovation platform design toolkit uh, that is more than 10 years old now. Uh, widely adopted uh, over uh, you know over the world, um, and on the other side we have the Trio toolkit that was born in 2019. So now it's four years old uh, from a collaboration we had with uh, and we still have with uh, Higher Modern Institute uh, that uh, uh, you know uh, basically is collaborating with Bandoles to make the random hay approach and. More in general, I would say the approaches that uh, uh, you know uh, are reflected in Rendan A uh, available to everybody uh, through an open source methodology, the Trio Toolkit. Uh, so, uh, with these two methodologies, and in general with our approach, we have been working uh, widely with with Bosch. Um, and, and today we are here, uh, myself, of course, and uh, Emanuele Quintarelli, that is. Uh, uh, who is the um, uh, um, trio uh, market enterprise lead? Emanuele, do you want to introduce yourself quickly? Sure, very briefly. I spent the last 20 years working with very large organizations, uh, bringing humans back uh, to their center. And more recently with Boundaryless, we have been exploring this concept of the trio that you have seen in the, in the slides. You want to share the meaning. Uh, an entrepreneurial ecosystemic uh, organization because we believe these are some of the traits of successful organizations in the future and that's what we are we are building with um, with uh, Bosch actually and so Pradeep maybe you can jump in and introduce yourself uh, a little bit yeah, hello everyone my name is Pradeep I represent uh, Bosch in India and uh, as a larger context of uh, digital transformation inside of Bosch globally. We have started on this journey four years back. Uh, in this pursuit, I think uh, we came across platform design thinking. Before we ventured with Boundaryless, we had our own uh, groundwork in terms of how we could apply. And once we started engaging with Boundaryless, we could see that uh, the implementation, the approach in terms of how uh, the digital process can come together with the platform thinking. And while we also found the, the relevant recipe which is needed to form uh, a sustainable structure, which is through the 3EO, I think this is an, an evolutionary journey and the more to talk about it today. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so let me just uh, double click quickly on some of the things we would like to discuss. Uh, first of all, I mean, the reality of uh, applying these uh, practices um, in a complex and large organization, which is, uh, of course, uh, has its own you know, challenges. And uh, um, also we want to tap into the various pieces. So it's very important, I think, that we convey that uh, uh, really engaging with these op ecosystemic opportunities is something that uh, spans across several pieces. And uh, at least we want to stress the point of connecting your portfolio strategy, your product strategies with uh, the organizational enablers. And what does it mean in terms of the cultural shift that is also that is also needed? And hopefully we can share some general practical lessons on what we did and, and something that you can also do with the, within your own organizations. So thank you so much. Thank you, Stuart, for, for moderating. Uh, I leave it to you for your uh, always excellent uh, moderation. The slides, we can we can kind of cut them off. Thanks a lot, Simone. Uh, thank you for everyone who's joined us so far. From I see people from India, Greece, Denmark, Poland. Please send in your questions at any, any time. And it'd be good to start with Pradeep as you're the practitioner here. You you are uh, faced with the reality of making things happen. Can you go back to the the ignition the ignition point from your point of view? When when did things get started, and what was the what was driving you to change? So there are two elements. Let me talk about it inside out and outside in. When I talk about inside out. It's about the organization itself. If you look at Bosch historically, we have been uh, one of the renowned players in the automotive industry. We have been here for over 138 years. Now, while in this journey, we have also seen that there has been a constant uh, uh, upgradation in terms of how we do business and how do we deliver value. Now, in this pursuit, we've also recognized the new age uh, offerings requires digital uh, entry. Of course, our presence in the industry has been always neutral with multiple OEMs because we have, we could imp uh, implement platform thinking in our product building, yeah, traditionally. Now, when we look at in the digital enterprise or a digital era, the delivery of these digital products and services has been, let's say, uh, changing uh, in the past decade or so. So we have to also constantly reinvent uh, towards meeting this newer trends, newer needs of the customers. So the majority of the customer used to be OEMs for us, but in the new age, there has been every form of mobility players who are emerging as the entity who could solve the mobility problems. So to cater to them, we also have to reinvent ourselves to cater to these kind of mobility customers. So that has been our, uh, let's say, internal motive to digitize. On the other hand, if you look at uh, the industry itself is also constantly changing. There has been more uh, uh, hundreds of OEMs who are evolving now. If you look at many of them venturing into building automobiles because electrification is far easier. They assemble fewer parts in, in comparison to an internal combustion engine, which has much more complication in it. Yeah, so you see a lot of entrant into electric vehicle OEM space. On the other hand, there's also ever uh, increasing need of movement. So there has been uh, affordability. There's an increase, let's say, uh, capability to spend from the people. So the mobility as such is raising. So which also causes more requirement coming from the mobility industry. And with the consumer electronics picking in, people also expect the same kind of experience, what they find on just using a mobile application on even from the mobility perspective. So the consumers are similar when they are using a Netflix subscription yeah, or a Prime subscription for watching a uh, video. It's a similar case in terms of how they want to have the mobility on their fingertip. So this was also seen in the Indian industry if you look at how uh, the open network digital commerce is evolving in India. ONDC is a big breakthrough. There is a unified pay payment interface during the uh, times of COVID. Uh, we went into digitization mode and then there has been trillions of, let's say, uh, transactions happening uh, if you look at on a monthly basis. So India as such is also conducive environment for digitization front, which also making us 
uh, adopt a digital savvy uh, approach so these two combination led us to also reinvent ourselves and how linked is is what you're doing in bosch in india to digital transformation more generally in bosch worldwide i would consider this as a pilot uh, case uh, if you look at uh, in general uh, bosch has ventured into digital transformation uh, probably uh, already before uh, in in the last 10 to 15 years there has been uh, steps taken uh, there has been investments made in terms of entering into digital more starting with connected vehicles connecting uh, the ecosystem now we are talking about uh, connecting vehicle user as well as the environment these topics were always in the pursuit so what we have specifically done in india was to cater to the needs of indian market with the uh, faster adoption of digital technologies and we have the largest uh, uh, connections of mobile network there's so much of advent of mobile phones in indian users so all of them look for uh, this kind of digital adoptions so we try to look at offering services on a marketplace so so far uh, our offering to the customers was always through our networked channels and we try to see if you could enter and offer our services through a network of a digital means while they can order products on a e-commerce store can they off the can the mobility customers also offer the algorithm software services on a digital marketplace does that concept work and is that going to solve the problem of the mobility companies and this is how we are trying to pilot some of the thoughts which probably are not yet uh, very mature across the mobility industry but it is widely accepted in indian ecosystem because that is very ripe for such a kind of invent and since it's it's also very conducive uh, we can also try and then see what works faster and evaluate and things whatever works we can take it back and then proliferate across the bosch world so this is the way in which how we started and what what have you learned along the way what 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 is what has surprised you so one of the biggest surprises is that uh, what uh, uh, what we shouldn't be doing more than what we do i think this is something which is a, a greater learning uh, for uh, for any startup entrepreneur because we are like a startup inside a, a, a bigger organization so we call ourselves an entrepreneurs so uh for us it's also very important to uh, notice that where uh, we should call a project a zombie and stop it and where should we invest uh, rightfully and this is always a challenge because the moment uh, you are an uh, founder inventor you always consider that the product is the right thing it will always survive and then you stretch it to that stretch that product to that level where you will see the no return on it so this is very important to call it at the right time and this is where i found a very interesting thought process uh, from the boundless as well to look at the first initial portion the moment when you have a bright idea before you put a big bet on it look at your evaluation cycle check the market check the customers is there a willingness to pay go and then look at it is this the right product for you to build it's one from the market is there an acceptance and from the company is it what we really want to do because even if there is a market acceptance probably the company is not cut out to do the these kind sort of things so it's always important to match this balance and this is the the most important learning out of uh, uh, what we have ventured uh, uh, emmanuel perhaps perhaps we could uh, come to come to you next um can you tell us about your your experience w- w- working with bosch and what you've learned and how uh, the application of uh, your your frameworks and models has has been uh, impacted by the the reality of uh, the indian reality sure uh, l- let me say that uh, first of all i've been impressed by the level of understanding uh, that bosch had uh, even before reaching out to us so you know it's just uh, acknowledging uh, that pradeep and the rest of the team had already done lots of thinking and lots of work into this space uh, but uh, maybe what what i learned from it is that uh, it's exactly in the application of some principles of some guidelines of the tools that we bring as boundaries to 
to the space within the specific context of India, of, uh, of Bosch, of PGMS, how the, the unit is, uh, is called, uh, that uh, amazing things can, uh, can happen. And let me give you just a few, a, a few examples. You know, we uh, bring this experience coming from highest run and A. There is a an strongly entrepreneurial approach, meaning that it wants to foster human beings uh, as an individual with lots of creativity and initiative and skin in the game. So from employees to creators of the future, of creators of new business, of uh, new products. Uh, well, we have talked a lot with Pradeep uh, and the team about how should we incentivate this in line with uh, Bosch culture, not in line with a different company or a different country. Uh, culture. So we talked a lot about, is it right to incentivize, incentivize the individual? Is it right to push teams to compete? Uh, is it right to only uh, invest on ideas without any kind of framework? And the conclusion, I think what Pradeep was also referring to, is the importance of mixing uh, a bit of understanding of what you want to achieve in the market, and Simone will talk, I guess, about the portfolio. So if you want making sense of all the opportunities you have, all the ideas that you have, all the energy you have, and uh, with what you can really bring to life. So in a sense, uh, this process uh, uh, was already there. That, that is my lesson. What we are done together, what we are trying to do together is to bring a bit of order and a framework uh, into it, a bit of a guideline for Pradeep's uh, uh, colleagues, uh, and a bit of, we would say, enabling constraints to this game. So it's not about rules, uh, it's about building uh, enough scaffolding uh, to it uh, for human beings, human beings to unlock their potential in line with strategic goals. That's what we are really trying, uh, trying uh, uh, to do. So it's about how much freedom you may have, uh, how you're going to reap the benefit from it at the individual and the corporate level. How are you going to foster collaboration and not only competition? I think these are some of the biggest questions that also other organizations have. <coughs> And it takes bravery within an organization for individuals and for the organization to, to, to challenge itself, to think again about everything it does. It's true. And uh, being brave to me is really the key word uh, for what uh, uh, Bosch India is doing. We have seen many corporations. We are lucky at the end. We are working with some of the largest companies and most complex companies in the world. And uh, in every domain, uh, in, every, in every industry, you know, there are many reasons for not doing things. Because you are regulated, uh, because you have legacy, because you are an incumbent, because you may cannibalize business. Uh, what I didn't see in, in Bosch India is uh, anything of this. We always seen uh, the openness to, to go beyond, to, you know, Look at the constraints. We started from the constraints. So we started from some limitations that uh, you, you have in any context. But uh, we work uh, on those constraints uh, as uh, enablers of new, of, uh, of new possibilities. Uh, another example I can give you is uh, thinking about the governance. Governance means how are we going to decide together, right? Uh, in a traditional space, it's one guy deciding and the rest of the team is doing, whether that's the CEO of the company or just the uh, team leader in, uh, a, in a group. Well, we talked a lot about this and eventually we said, that's not what we want to see. What we want to see is a more peer-to-peer, self-managed reality. And this small decision uh, is going to have a huge ripples because it's totally changing you know, the mood, it's totally changing the energy and the the, the, the risk-taking attitude that uh, each team uh, into the model will have. So these are small, apparently small decisions with huge repercussions uh, across the organization. So brave, yes, that's, that's the key word. Uh, Pradeep, you, you talk uh, yourself and, and, and your team as being int entrepreneurs. Uh, do you think that's a necessary condition to ch change a, a large organization? to change a large organization? 
I think uh, uh, I would use autonomy with a certain framework because uh, uh, entrepreneurs will uh, evolve the moment you give them sufficient freedom within a boundary and a defined, uh, let's say, framing, a strategic framing, we call it here. You define a certain direction and then say, this is where we want to be uh, and let them uh, pursue that because at the end of the day, it's 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 up to the individual or the team and their capability to figure out uh, and they will reach that end state. And what we have always focused is that, uh, of course, the end state is going to be the vision, the true north. The, the most important element is the journey the individuals or the teams should make because that's the most important element. If you always focus on the end state, then we miss out this portion because this is what will make an individual an entrepreneur because they are able to take risk, they're able to fail, they learn from the failure and eventually they reach probably far beyond the expected end state. So autonomy with a certain strategic framing is what makes entrepreneurs in the organization. So, yeah, so autonomy with a framework is a bit of a paradox. So Emmanuel and Simone, you bring, you bring the frameworks, but you also bring uh, an appetite for collaboration and, and openness at the same time. So Simone, perhaps, perhaps we can t t t turn to you. Does that, does that kind of describe it? I mean, in general, I, I think what we learned by working with, with Bosch and other, and other customers is that, uh, you know, in the transition between the traditional siloed monolithic organizations that we already know and we are comfortable with, let's say, uh, as we move into this new world that uh, Pradeep was describing, you know, with new stakeholders, new needs, uh, much more diversity, um, we are conscious that we have to somehow unbundle right the organization and give more autonomy and give more, you know, to generate more adaptability, we have to give more autonomy. But I, I think what we learned is that uh, uh, there is a trilemma, let's say, when you do these transformations. And uh, the, the three pieces that you want to achieve, uh, ideally, you know, you want to have an adaptable organization, an autonomous organization, but also a coherent organization, right? And that was uh, something that uh, uh, we discussed widely with, with Bosch, you know, for example, the coherence of a brand that, uh, you know, coming into a market uh, and, and customers uh, uh, don't you know, need to, to feel like that the brand is coherent with the product strategy and so on. So I, I think, uh, uh, you know, the work with Bosch is, is pushing us uh, to do, uh, essentially to try to do two things. You know, on one side, we are creating these visual portfolios. We are, we, are, we are trying to create a common, let's say, common understanding in, the, in this large uh, employee base and entrepreneurial base of what we are trying to achieve. And, and Pradeep said, this is where we want to be, right? So we are trying to visualize the portfolio. We are trying to visualize the market. Um, we're trying to make it clear for everybody that, you know, that, you know, this is what we want to achieve. This is how our, our portfolio is evolving. So there is a visual component, right? And, and on the other hand, um, you know, of course, you know, when you build this portfolio and you try to codify also how, you know, essentially what can you build as an entrepreneur? Can you build a component? Can you build a bundle? And you try to give these enabling constraints to, to the teams to say, you know, how can you collaborate with another team to bring something on the market, how the pieces go together? You also need to give them some co, uh, some accountability, right? Because I think another another thing we are discovering in, in the last uh, few years is that uh, traditional large scale agile transformations, um, you know, too often end up with teams that uh, are not really accountable to the customer, right? We, we try to we parcelize the work, we we give autonomy and and, and self management, but uh, these teams lack the connection with the market that makes them accountable. So what we're trying to do is really to, uh, I would say, balance, let's say, uh, the accountability with coherence of brand. So uh, telling essentially teams, you can explore the market, you, you can be accountable to your PNL, for example, to your customers, but at the same time, you have to be coherent. And I think this uh, is where the, the, the hard part comes up. So um, essentially there are two 
two principles that clash a little bit here. On one side, you want to give people accountability to the market. And on the other side, you want to regulate, let's say, how they get into the market because you want to ensure coherence. So I think a brand that uh, essentially moves into this space needs to keep in mind that there is this paradox that you have to you have to manage. So I, th I think this is something that came out uh, a few times and that, that's where most of the challenges are, you know, coherence and autonomy, because at the end of the day, we want to create an, an organization that is, uh, there's a lot of options, right? Uh, and can create more options as we go, but uh, you cannot create pointless options on one side. So you want people to be accountable to the customer, but on the other side, all these options cannot be like, you know, Mix said they, they need to be coherent, you know, in a nice way that, for example, favors upselling or it favors, uh, uh, you know, bundling of products and so on. So that's, I think, the, the, the hot, white hot spot where we are now researching and practicing with Bosch. So thinking of a portfolio of products as an ecosystem, how, how does this contrast to the way a portfolio of products would have been thought of in the past? Can you just kind of clar clarify that, Simone? I mean, I, I think in general, in the past, products have been developed uh, as a portfolio, but from a very top-down perspective. So there is a, a you know, some someone, some office that decides, you know, what we build, the roadmaps, and, and so on. Um, instead, what we're trying to achieve with Bosch and, and in general with the companies that are evolving towards uh, a portfolio approach powered by an entrepreneurial organization as Manuela said, is to create these enabling constraints, right? And these enabling constraints is like ju just giving people, uh, imagine, you know, you give kids some Lego bricks and uh, you tell them, you know, you can either create a new Lego brick with some kind of specification. So, you know, it cannot be, you know, it can be maybe not longer than these or not bigger than that. The colors that you can use are those. Uh, and also, uh, there is another capability that we are nurturing into these people uh, is how do they actually put together the Lego bricks, right? So imagine that the, diff the main difference is instead of top-down dictating what we're going to build and, and using the resources we have in the organization a bit as fuel that we consume in building these products, it's like giving rules and constraints so that teams can come up with new ideas for new components of the portfolio. So I, I think uh, um, I want to just close with, with mentioning a couple of things uh, that I, I was reading, for example, yes, last week, uh, uh, an article, a blog post from the UN, uh, United Nations Development Program that uh, has transitioned towards a portfolio approach in the last uh, five years. And they mentioned this idea of productive discomfort. So uh, we are used to, top-down industrial organization that obsess about productivity. So what we want to build instead is much more adaptability and optionality here. So we have to be ready as organizational leaders to, to understand and let uh, those people find uh, the teams, find the space, you know, find exp experiment and maybe burn some energy in things that won't become final products at the end. Uh, but in this way, we, we create something that is much more authentic and uh, resonates much more with the market. Uh, Pradeep, the, does the phrase productive discomfort sum up your experience over the last few years? Discomfort, yes. I think productive, I'll add to that. <laughs> yeah, so if, if I just uh, uh, made uh, uh, a note, uh, uh, element in terms of how we made our journey in the last uh, a few years here, uh, we wanted to create discomfort the moment once we reach a state of comfortness in what we do. And that's constantly helped us evolve. I'll give you an example. So when we started off, our focus was to find the, the relevant problem in the mobility industry, pick up a, let's say, user journey. Let's, for example, if I am an office goer, how do I go to office and what kind of problems do I face? What kind of options do I have? This is as simple as it gets. So when I assess this, I'll find a lot of areas, there are friction points, which could which can be addressed and by addressing it, there's a willingness to pay. The first step for us is let's solve the problem and then we have an immediate customer. That's what we did. We focused on solving a specific problem. It gives us energy, it gives us confidence and it gives us comfort that, yeah, we are in the right space. The moment when we figured that, okay, this is solving a problem, we moved the level up and then said, 
let's say that if the same problem can be solved by 100 others how could i enable these 100 others to this solve this problem so i i can be the enabler for all those problem solvers in the market so now i have to think completely differently because then i'm inviting competition i'm actually creating competitors for me for the products what i have built so there the thinking goes into drain and then we have to now go back to the drawing books and then say let's look at a, an approach where i become an enabler my role play has changed from problem solving to a problem solving enabler so i am enabling problem solving here so we started to create that kind of a platform which helped us in a newer journey of thinking now when we have to elevate a level up so we also discovered that how could i play from an enabler to an orchestrator because there could be a bunch of uh, uh, let's say companies who want to come together and then they are trying to unite and then solve the problem can i enable a ground for them with all that ammunition what they need to go and then fight the battle instead of me standing in the field and then doing that can i create that equipment can i create the necessary stuff this is what i think simone was mentioning uh, very nicely can i give them the building blocks where the creativity allows them to assemble it the way they want it but the building blocks is what we provide and then maybe the initial instructions as the recipe to build them i think this has been our constant let's say journey where we had to move away from the comfort and then uh, evolve ourselves and this is where i think the uh, engagement with boundaryless is also helping in terms of structuring this into a well thought of playbook and a good thought process for us to sustain i think that the next leg which is going to be the most crucial one is how do we sustain and that's where the organizational design comes into picture and this is where we have a lot of oxymorons to it i think uh, when we are living in a world where mass customization is essential as mass and custom doesn't come together so there is many more oxymorons which will come in and so sure if i if i can jump in uh, i think pradeep really captured uh, a bit of the challenge that uh, most organizations are facing where trying to look at portfolio in an ecosystemic way to me the fascinating part is that the same is happening across the company border so what bosch is doing is exactly the same in the market and within the organization so within the organization you could again solve the problems so create the services the functions the teams uh, Uh, necessary to address uh, some needs uh, or act as a platform so become becoming the incubator for any team ideally to come together and to solve the problem their own way and this is the first part of what simone was saying so the brick the second level is not only individual teams to come up but more teams to come together and to create more complex and dynamic services. So the fascinating part is that you have a fractal structure that cuts across the organization, both in the market and within the organization. And to our understanding, this is the only way you can scale this game in an unlimited way, because basically you don't have bureaucracy in doing this. You're not uh, uh, just basing your work on your internal resources. What Pradeep was saying, actually I'm empowering competitors to do this work, but I'm also empowering suppliers and partners uh, and startups uh, and vendors uh, to do this game. So you are immediately open up your organization to the world and bringing the people that can address the problem in the most effective and scalable way uh, to the game. To me, this is really massively powerful. Uh, Anastasia is joining us from Greece. Uh, thank you for joining us, Anastasia. And she asks, um, well, she, she asks about the different relationships with consumers that this has created. Does it allow you to kind of reinvent relationships with consumers and Of, of all of all types of of all incomes and has it opened up uh, new types of consumers to you uh, pradeep well i would say i think we've been more uh, we had more empathy with this because the moment once you have analyzed the user journey it it is like solving my own problem nobody used to address my problem and the moment when i 
saw that i am able to draw that user journey and i could be i could connect to the audience much more stronger now uh, what we also realized is especially in the digital business your partners are your customers the, the the ones who consume from you are the ones who also create and then sell to you so this is a kind of dual relationship which was not existent which was actually far apart in a conventional industry because the supplier tend to stay at a different part and then the consumption will happen at a different end but platform and the digital means allows it to be united so this is one the other one is being more empathetic about the problem solving brings more attention to more stakeholders in the ecosystem more actors yes i would say this has actually opened up a lot of avenues Uh, Tushar Gupta makes the point that you, you've transitioned to to becoming a problem a problem solver and enabler. So you're kind of a uh, the, the entire shift of emphasis is 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 to solving problems for consumers. The shift, uh, I would say, uh, uh, it it uh, in the journey, as I said, right. The true north was always to be an enabler, but without. solving a problem i don't understand what the pain of the problem solver so that is the first step in our journey but we before we got comfortable in that journey we ventured on to what we wanted to truly do so now we are in that journey of enabling and before we get comfortable there and say uh, it becomes a top driven organization that's when we said how can we get uncomfortable there and then also bring in a structure so that it can sustain and that's where the organizational design comes in so the true north was always becoming a problem solving enabler and it was just on the journey we solved few problems it it seems to me emmanuel this is changes kind of org- organizational design becomes a a constant part of an organization rather than something they do every two or three years when they have a look at their strategy Yeah, this is one point. So it's a, a continuous evolution, not a transformation. So there is no point A and point B. It's a continuous journey. The second uh, discontinuity, if you want, the second difference uh, is that uh, much of the design uh, is emergent. What I mean with that is not uh, there is no central team uh, putting together all the answers. by design we know that uh, we won't be able to have the answers uh, until the system will have tested uh, evolved uh, changed uh, the system so the ownership of the design is distributed uh, together with the action within uh, within the the design so it's a shared responsibility it's massively distributed it's emergent meaning that many answers uh, are not coming from uh, from the top uh, or from consultants and uh, it's uh, a continuous journey of uh, of uh, exploration um, that uh, increases the relevance uh, uh, between the organization and the market and reduces especially the distance between the organization and the market simone you've done projects throughout the world you've worked boundaryless works with organizations throughout the world how important was the 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 indian context to what 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 uh, pradeep has been doing at bosch was it was india uh, kind of uniquely responsive do you think well i mean i, I think generally um, we are uh, in india we are seeing a lot of initiatives to as um, pradeep mentioned you know unified payment inf- infrastructure or you know ondc for example all these initiatives are, are signaling let's say that um, Uh, the indian decision makers and policy makers are uh, want to have a more bubbling a more competitive more uh, evolutionary and adaptive digital market they are not uh, uh, interested in uh, seeing the digital market sclerotizing around a large player okay uh, you know they are really pushing for interoperability and access and and you know, more open access you know so to some extent yes i think the cultural uh push let's say that we received from from the indian market was a push towards uh, uh also for bosch you know to think um, uh, i would say uh preemptively of uh, uh, potentially a regulator coming in and say you know you cannot monopolize this piece this piece needs to be connected with other pieces right so it's like the companies have start are starting to adopt uh, 
uh, positive posture uh, towards uh, um, openness and interoperability, which I think it's really, it's really interesting. Uh, culturally speaking, I would say, uh, you know, uh, Manuel, Emanuele mentioned this, uh, the team at Bosch had been doing so much, you know, forward thinking work. So I think uh, sometimes uh, uh, maybe, um, you know, uh, the traditional European or US markets are sometimes, you know, tend to be uh, more uh, focused on, you know, well-known approaches, much more, a bit more conservative approaches. So I think uh, this mix of cultural openness towards the new things, you know, and on the other side, uh, a public discourse around interoperability and openness, uh, it's kind of gave us a head start um, in thinking about, you know, being ambitious and thinking, you know, how these new units that we are contributing, designing and kickstarting uh, can be ambitious enough to think itself as a real industry mobilizer, a, a real ecosystem mobilizer and not uh, just optimizing for one company outcome, but more thinking in terms of, uh, thinking as an ecosystem, I would say. So I, I think, yes, you know, I must say uh, it probably had a non-negligible role in, in, you know, in setting up the ambitions of uh, this project transformation. And wh where, where does this go next, Pradeep? What, 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 what's happening now and what, what's going to happen in, in the future, do you think? I think fundamentally now uh, we started off with the mobility. We would like to now reach out beyond India. We are already starting off our journey uh, in Europe and Northern America because we see the mobility problems are similar. Of course, the kind of uh, applications could be different, but the problems are very, very similar. So now what we have tried to do in India, we want to extend it in Europe and Northern America and also scale this uh, with more partners coming in, experiment and then try out this new organization uh, implementation which is going to come in. We want to experiment internally to see how it's going to best fit for us. And of course, we will have to live with this kind of paradoxes and then try uh, to see where we get there. I think this is a journey. I think we will only learn and then enrich ourselves as we go along. That's what I see. And what, what do you think of the broader lessons, Emanuele? So to me, the lesson is that uh, uh, you really have to embrace what is happening in the market. That's uh, f the first one for me, honestly embrace. And it's scary. Uh, if you're an executive, probably this is quite the opposite of everything you have done, successfully done for the last two, two decades. You have to empower your organization to come up with solutions, not just with answers, but with the design. As, a, as I said, and, uh, and you have to accept that you don't know the answer. Uh, in the conversations with Fradeep and the rest of the team, many times uh, we have accepted that we didn't know what was going to happen. So we, we just uh, put together some uh, options, some ideas, uh, waiting for the feedback from uh, colleagues or from the market uh, to rethink, uh, rethink the, the design. I think these are somewhat some um, requirements or pre-requirements if you want to embrace uh, this new way of doing strategy and running uh, portfolios through ecosystems. So you need humility and bravery. Both. And energy, I would say. <laughs> it takes a bit of work. I think Pradeep can testimony to that. Yeah, uh, we're running out of time, Simone. Some some fi final words and ideas and, and resources for people watching to help them begin their own journey. Thank you so much. Yes, if Monica can bring up the slides quickly. Uh, so this is what we discussed today. Hopefully we'll be able to transmit some of the general practical lessons. First of all, I want to say don't hesitate to reach out, uh, to explore some of the concepts that, that we shared. We at Bandlers were always eager to, ex to exchange and to share our learnings. Uh, so uh, to do so, you can head to uh, blss.io slash WT50 and you will find uh, four blog posts. Uh, well, actually, you will find the PDF that we use today uh, with all, uh, a link to these four blog posts in the PDF where we 
touch some of the topics that we discussed. So this trilemma of autonomy, accountability, uh, and uh, uh, adaptability, sorry, and coherence, uh, building visual portfolios, uh, building this mix of uh, ecosystem organizational uh, settings and portfolios, and adopting this product centricity at scale. So you can find a lot of inspiration. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you want to engage with us uh, in collaborations. We are always looking forward to pioneering organizations. And thank you so much for, for uh, the Business Ecosystem Alliance to give us the possibility to, uh, you know, kind of reach out to you and, and see how we can help. Uh, if you want to get in touch, don't hesitate to write me. This is my, this is my contact. So thank you so much, uh, everybody, for listening and for Stuart to be such a great uh, host uh, as always. Thank you very much, Simone. Thank you very much, Emanuele. And thank you, Pradeep. Uh, I think it's great stories. What we're looking for is stories of ecosystem thinking being converted into practice. Uh, and that is, I think this story shows that to make that happen requires a certain openness to ideas on both sides and openness to consumers and new ways of thinking. So thank you very much for joining us. And we're actually uh, running another webinar on Thursday, the uh, 25th this week with uh, Leon Prieto and Simone Phipps talking about cooperative advantage and much more. So thank you for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.